Welcome everyone to day three of EA Global Summit 2021. This is Juhi from EA Global Summit organizing team. Firstly, thanks to everyone for your time and interest in joining us for this session. This session is by Alain Debrader and Ursula Namat presenting this session in the Lab of Innovations for Large Scale Enterprise visual Visualizations and Transformations. Kindly be informed that we will be muting all the participants throughout the session. And if any of you are having any questions, please use the questions window to drop your questions to the speaker. The speakers will answer the questions at the end. To enable further collaborations and Arsalia and Alain, we request you to visit LabNOC meeting room in MS Teams to have a one-to-one -one communication with the speakers. The link to the Microsoft Teams channel is posted in the chat window for your quick reference. Thanks once again for your continual support to EA Global Summit 2021. Over to you, Arsalia, now. Uh, hello, uh, everybody. Uh, hello, Juhi. I'm really happy to be here and thank you for the whole uh, organization uh, and thank you for the whole uh, team. So uh, let's get started. And uh, well, um, Alain, the stage is yours. Thank you, Arsalia. Hello to everyone. You probably heard about LabNav, the all-in-one and unified solution for driving transformations. Today we will provide you with a practical walkthrough. You will see what different roles are involved and how they concretely collaborate. How they collaborate through the process of driving transformation. You will see what each role uses, reuses and produces and what tool is used to visualize and transform the enterprise at large scale. This picture shows some typical steps for creating an architecture framework. I say an architecture framework. I'm not even talking about a complete framework for driving transformations. And as you know, building a complete architecture practice, a transformation framework, this is a long journey. And it takes so long that the project is often canceled before the framework gets usable. So much time and money was wasted. And at the end, there's still no vehicle for driving transformations. So it would be great if there was a turnkey solution for driving transformations end to end. If you're already familiar with LabNav, you know that LabNav is this all-in-one framework. It is all-in-one because it contains the roles and responsibilities. It contains the process for driving transformations, the modeling language and the charts, the software and the repository structure. It is also unified. It's a unified framework because the process is inspired by many standards. So by definition, since LabNav is all-in-one and unified, it is also actionable out of the box. LabNav is used by large and complex organizations, large customers, build structured and traceable architecture on day one. If you take the IT for IT framework as a reference, here is how the LabNav process mapped to the IT value chain. The process of driving transformation corresponds to the first step in this IT value chain. IT for IT called this first step strategy to portfolio. This is an overview of the LabNav process for driving transformation. If you want to know more about the process, there is a nine minute video on the LabNav channel on YouTube. It explains it step by step. Here are some of the many standards that were merged. So, the standards were not integrated because they were not meant to be integrated. Instead, the LabNav process semantically merges their concepts into one single workflow. And to merge these concepts, 
we use generic system semantics. And again, this saves you much time and money. The repository has a standard structure. It is consistent with the structure of the process. To visualize your enterprise, you need, of course, more than tools. You need also rich data that Sparks here and Proliferate can then in turn display. LabNav can automatically import, calculate values, generate diagrams, normalize the repository structure, generate implicit connectors, and many other things. LabNav can either schedule these tasks or you can run these on demand. So, as a result, Sparks here and Prolaborate can display very rich and useful information. And thanks to LabNav, all models and charts are now reusable across many organizations. Because there is one single LabNav modeling language, metamodel, and repository structure. Let's now have a quick look at the LabNav guidance website. To get to this website, we need to go first to the main website, the labnav.1 website. And inside this website, we see the resource menu. Inside, there is a navigable user guidance option. I click on it and I'm now in the end user guidance website, which is, as you can see, generated uh, from a Sparks repository with LabNav content, of course. So the first part of the guidance describes the language, the elements and connectors, the viewpoints, the language metamodel, the conceptual metamodel. Then it describes the process that is using the language, using the process which creates some uh, model repository content that we can use to uh, create reports and so on. So if you click on any of these items, you will get documentation. And there are a lot of productivity tools that you can discover in there. And then you have samples as well, sample models. Now, uh, let's look at the process from the guidance website. There are, as you can see, six different ways to describe the process. The one we choose here is the flow of related viewpoints. So in LabNav, there are viewpoints at three levels of detail. It's a structure and it's a flow at three levels. So this is level one. At level one, we see the visible enterprise description viewpoint which is used to create the strategy definition, which is used to create a strategy execution, which is used to create project architecture with solution architecture inside. So it's not a strict relationship. You can, of course, always directly start from the project architecture, create your solution architect, but it's always better to know why you're doing that project. Huh? And if you're defining a strategy, it's always better to know why. Uh, it's because you know what the problems are in your enterprise. If it's not visible, it's hard to find out. In the visible enterprise description, we have level two viewpoints, which are portfolios. Each portfolio describes some perspective of the enterprise. We can, for instance, uh, choose information portfolio, which is the simplest one. So we have entities and then information, which are more detailed, and then evolution of information, which are three kinds of viewpoint. If I drill down again, so entities is actually a level three viewpoint, so it corresponds to a diagram type. 
and for each viewpoint level 3, for each diagram type, you have a description of how to uh, lay out your diagrams. As an example, what questions this type of view, this viewpoint answers, the type of elements and connectors that you can use. Let's now have a look at some other portfolio like the enterprise function portfolio. We use the word enterprise function and not business capability because we keep the word capability uh, to mean target capabilities like in the scaled agile framework and we will uh, discuss that during the demo. I click on enterprise function portfolio and I see the different level three viewpoints, diagram types that can be used to describe these enterprise functions. And in this case, for instance, for instance, we want to see which application supports which uh, enterprise function, or it could be which equipment supports which uh, enterprise function. So you can also create uh, equipment uh, portfolios. You have application portfolios, you have also equipment portfolio. For robotics, it's quite important to have that. And the same for uh, people, so function organization landscape. Now let's have a look at the meta model. So the meta model is actually describing the complete set of concepts used across the process. So strategy and enterprise architecture is a part of this. And then you have uh, solution architecture which is much more detailed. So if I just look at the strategy and enterprise architecture, this is just a subset of it, you can see that the meta model is expressed using the end user language itself. So the configuration of the meta model and the uh, documentation of the meta model are one and the same thing so it's much less work and if you change any connector there the validation changes immediately now as i said uh, this is just a default meta model that you can easily configure um, and it's the same for the uh, viewpoints used for uh, describing uh, the strategy and enterprise architecture. Again, you can also configure this, the dependencies and so on. This is, for instance, the application interactions diagram, which is also used in solution architecture in this case. Now, there is also a complete list of level three viewpoints accessible from the guidance. You can see all the level three viewpoints. They are mainly organized following portfolios because not everything is a portfolio. For instance, strategy. Now that we had a quick overview of the guidance website, we can go back to our presentation to introduce the demo. And the demo is about Bobco. So the case study is about Bobco, the bus operating company. They are operating in Sildenia, which is somewhere in the north. And Bobco is facing some challenges, like losing customers uh, returning to their car because of COVID. But there are also some technology opportunities to improve customers' loyalty and to attract new customers. So this SWOT is of course a deliverable in the LabNav process. Now, we'll see how the LabNav process is used for driving Bobco's transformations. The enterprise architect provides some high-level description of the enterprise. She or he adds a lot of operational information that describes how Bobco works. The solution architect 
also populates the visible enterprise description by adding technical information. Charts are used to summarize the information and to help taking the right decisions. The strategist analyzes the current business context from an internal and from an external perspective. Then she or he reviews the business models and the goals. The business architect determines how the goals impact value streams. Well, more precisely how the goals impact enterprise functions used by these value streams, by these high-level processes. The enterprise architect identifies the target capabilities that are needed to optimize the value streams. And that leads to a target capabilities roadmap. Target capabilities are assigned to projects. And that leads to a roadmap of projects. Then for each project, a solution architect defines an architectural solution that realizes the target capabilities. And if the solution gets approved, then the solution architect adds the solution to the visible enterprise description. Then the solution gets implemented. And at some point, the solution will be running in production. Then the solution architect needs to update the ASIS situation in the visible enterprise description. There are, of course, many more roles involved, but for this demo, we are focusing on architecture and strategy. Now, let's see how this works in practice. This is the Bobco repository. It contains the dashboards, the visible enterprise or so the description of the enterprise with different portfolios inside the vision which contains the strategy definition and execution and the different projects the ongoing projects first thing you want to do if you want to describe your enterprise is of course to create a functional landscape a functional landscape, some call this a business capabilities landscape. We don't use the word business capability because the word capability is overloaded. We keep the word capability in the sense of target capabilities to create target capabilities roadmaps like in the scaled agile framework. We don't want to use a term that could mean different things in different contexts. So once you have created your structure of enterprise functions, we have a process for doing that. You want to define also what are the flows of entities exchanged between the enterprise functions. You can see the different levels of enterprise functions. You can see entities, a product price in this case being exchanged. We want also to describe what are the applications or it could be also equipment or organizations that support the enterprise functions. You can see also that these applications and their connectors have some little icons that represent plateaus. So plateaus are just another dimension of the elements and connectors. You don't need to replicate elements and connectors. It's just another dimension in LAMNAV. 
then you can define how these uh, enterprise function communication there translate to communication between applications. Now, this diagram here was created by hand. It was used it actually to enter application and show how they uh, realize enterprise functions. Now, what LabNav does is that it uses diagram generation. So this diagram is actually the same as this one, but this one is complete. It also shows which applications support which enterprise function. These applications and this is uh, an enterprise function. So the fact is that when it is generated, it is always complete. You show that all the elements that should be there are on the diagram. The, the layout is also always consistent. And of course, it doesn't take any time, it's automatic. Now, there is another way to quickly populate your repositories to import, of course. So you can, for example, create a new uh, catalog. You don't have to, but I create the catalog pack package here. I call it 0 to 9, okay. And then I can, from there, specialize LAMNAV, import, tabular report. It can be a CSV or an Excel. I select uh, an, an Excel file in this case, okay, with three applications in there with their properties. I could provide an, a field name mapping file, but I don't. It knows these are applications because that's what I selected. I selected a, a, a package for applications. And I need to say enable create new elements because I don't want to just update. I want to create new elements as well. So I import and actually now you can see the new applications that were imported and you can see by the way that they have some uh, value that has been automatically initialized there that is part of the LabNav uh, automatic calculation that you can configure can, it's very flexible and you can uh, initialize new, uh, values for new elements or calculate or cascade calculations uh, periodically as you want. Now, um, if you want, you can also import values for existing elements. Uh, for example, if you want to create a survey, but to create the survey itself, you would like to uh, generate some reports that you can then uh, exchange with your colleagues or whoever and then you uh, can then update the values and import so this is a template report you can have plenty of there are plenty of template reports here okay um, so they are um, models and you can simply select like that generate tabular report again you can generate excel or csv i generate an excel in this case and it comes okay good you can see that it corresponds to the template that is there in terms of co uh, grouping colors and so on so you see all the properties, but you see also that at the end there are here some mappings to enterprise functions, could be anything, you can create any template and um, the mapping happens at level 3, but actually it's cons it is automatically consolidated at level 2 and level 1. Okay, now we can also look at what happens in um, 
prolaborate. So this is the so these are the architecture and strategy dashboards for the Bobco organization. And you can see that they are following the process of driving transformation. So this is the process a summary, a very short summary of the process again. The first step is to describe the enterprise. So the enterprise architect will start doing that by providing high level operational information and gap information. So we start with the enterprise function portfolio. So enterprise functions are like uh, business capabilities. As I said, we don't use the term because we don't want to confuse users with uh, business capabilities and target capabilities, which are very different things. So these are enterprise functions and um, everything I will show you now is possible thanks to the predefined unified language, the predefined meta model, the predefined repository structure, and the LabNav productivity tools. Also the charts and the dashboards are reusable across customers. And it's possible you now to share industry models for insurance or banking industry and so on. Because the language repository, uh, the meta model are stable, they're always the same. So it's shareable. The, so in this enterprise function portfolio, you see this structure of uh, enterprise functions. There are uh, three levels in this example. And um, these ones are based on a base map, a same base map. So a base map is used to create heat maps. Each heat map is making an overlay on the base map to show a specific type of information. So this one, for example, is showing the total cost of ownership for the supporting applications. And this is using actually cascaded calculations. So each application has some TCO, uh, which is then applied to the enterprise functions that are supported by this application at the lowest level. And then it's recalculated at each upper level until we get to level one here. Okay, so that's one example. And the advantage of these uh, heat maps based on base map is that everyone re can recognize the structure. It's always the same. Now, there's another type of uh, chart, which is... Uh, not fixed in this case because it's based on filters. So, for example, this one, we're showing only the enterprise functions that provide customer benefit, like uh, passenger information, itinerary information, reminders, reminders and warnings. So this is really uh, for the customer. And uh, we can see here the effectiveness of these enterprise functions using colors. So that's what the enterprise architect does and he can directly uh, use the attributes there uh, to set these, um, these values. So this one, for example, is not set by hand, it is automatically calculated. Okay. Now, the solution architect no, needs to provide some technical information and gaps to describe the enterprise. So what does he do? He can actually uh, reuse the uh, enterprise functions, so this is called actually a functional landscape, some call it a business capability map, but okay. Um, and um, we can uh, zoom, for instance, in the marketing and sales there. Uh, okay, that's what the solution architect does. And you can leverage the generated diagrams because these elements are real elements. These are not drawings, these are real elements that have been compacted uh, to fill a screen effectively. 
and colored automatically. So it can, the solution architect can then, for instance, select some enterprise function and then uh, some uh, application, for instance, this one, uh, Athena Order Management. And uh, it can, for example, set the attributes uh, for example, the uh, technical fit. And you can also, for example, uh, define some uh, um, application interactions with some uh, interface protocols and also the database related to, to this application. So you can really um, zoom and um, navigate these uh, elements and set properties. So that's one example. Uh, what can be done afterwards is to look at the application portfolio itself. In the application portfolio, we have, for instance, the roadmaps of applications. Each application can have some, uh, uh, some um, attributes for the in operation start date and end date, and many other things. Okay. And that's what is used to create these uh, roadmaps. So these are application roadmaps. This uh, is actually also using cascaded calculations to calculate actually the amount of application documentation. This is based on uh, the number of diagrams that describe the application and its components, the number of uh, interfaces, incoming information, outcoming information that has been modeled. So these are this is okay just showing the application following the vision okay and you name it so this is another uh, diagram based on chart based on filter and here you can see it's filter based on the low functional fit applications with low functional fit and we call all the technical fit so for instance we can see that this one has a low, it's, it's present, so it has been filtered, it has a low functional fit, but it has also a low technical fit, it's in red. This one, on the other hand, is present, it has a low functional fit, but it is, has a high technical fit, which means that we could uh, improve that one and add by adding a new uh, functionality. Now, the strategy definition dashboard this is for the strategist the strategist uh, first analyzes the context what is the current context from an internal perspective and from an external perspective so there are different uh, techniques for doing that and that i integrated in the lab nav transformation process to analyze the context from macro environment, the competitive environment, and from there we define, uh, we summarize the information, that's what a strategist does, he summarizes the information into a SWOT. The SWOT uh, shows, for instance, weaknesses like the Bobco is losing customers who are returning to car, probably because of COVID. And uh, it's difficult to, for customers to find the best itinerary. There are no appropriate tools for doing that. So customer experience might be uh, improved. So the mission and vision, the business model canvas, the strategy. Uh, uh, so that is all. This, this was all to define the context. This is now the. Um, to refine the strategy based on the context. So we might refine the business model, that is possible, okay? But we might also review the corporate objectives for the next five years. And we might 
refine the, the goals, the smart goals that will uh, be realizing these strategic objectives in terms of real numbers and dates. And then we can import automatically the actual achievement of each goal so that it's colored automatically. Then this was at the corporate level. Now we can zoom into the goals at um, the... We can cascade these goals into different enterprise functions uh, or departments if they represent at the same time department sometimes. So the we can define for marketing and sales the more specific goals like uh, keeping 95% of existing customers or for uh, travel communication, notify customers about the status of their subscription. So that was all about strategy definition. We tell what we want to do in the future. And then next thing is to see how we will do it. That's the strategy execution. And to do that, we have uh, the uh, business architect who enters the game. So we have the enterprise architect and the solution architect who, vis who provide information to visualize the enterprise. We have the strategist who, who define the context and define some goals. And now we have the business architect who will define some value streams to see how to realize these goals in the overall set of value streams. So we look at the, so we see that there are problems with reminders and warnings. So what we will do is that for the post booking value stream stage, for the reminders and warning enterprise function, we will define a target capability. So you see why we don't want to use the same word capability for both. This is a stable thing. This is an unstable thing. So uh, enterprise functions, business capabilities are very stable. The structure must be stable. On the other hand, these target capabilities are high level requirements and are pretty unstable. Requirements change all the time. So you can see that we define here a subscription expiry alerts target capability that will impact this enterprise function. We have another one there. Okay. And then uh, we can refine, we can say, okay, here actually we're mapping the target capability to the goals and to the demands. We can also manage demands in LabNav for catalogs of demands. Um, so we can define the target capabilities dependencies to create a target to provide a target capability to develop it we need to develop maybe some other target capabilities that might be dependencies and priorities as well by the way and then we can also define um, impact so this uh, new target capability will impact existing applications that's the impact but it could be also realized by new processes. So we say impact to impact existing things, existing things and then realize to have new items that realize the uh, target capabilities. It could be anything. It could be an application there, a process there, or both, whatever. So once we have defined our uh, target capabilities dependencies, we can create target capabilities roadmaps because we also set some uh, dates on each target capabilities. So we can create roadmaps uh, for these target capabilities. And then uh, we can define, uh, we can then put those target capabilities, uh, we can group them together to create projects. And then we create also project roadmaps or epics. They are modeled in epics in LabNav. So in terms of in terms of roles here, uh, so we had the business architect who defines the, uh, the value streams, refines the value streams. The enterprise architect actually adds the target capabilities. And then there is a project manager that will transform these target capabilities into projects with the help of the architects, of course. No, we're actually in this strategy execution dashboard where we defined a project roadmap. 
Now let's look at the project architecture dashboard. So running, some projects are running. Let's look at the specific dashboard. So each type of project has a specific set of viewpoints to be delivered. It could be a small project, a large project, an infrastructure project, whatever. They have specific set of viewpoints to be delivered and you can see for each project that is running which one have been which views have been already delivered and which one are missing following the mandatory set of viewpoints for each uh, project you can also assign individuals which play some role you can put a picture instead if you want and because the structure of the project is always the same, the folder in the repository is always the same structure, you can generate automatically uh, the solution architecture document using a LabNav template, which actually provides a, a structure that follows this structure of package. And you can see here all the uh, deliverables. You can see, for instance, the, uh, the different enterprise functions that are impacted by the project. You can see the applications that are impacted. You can see the, for instance, yes, the application functions. So the logical, uh, solution and then the physical solution that relies a logical solution you can define application as a service if needed you can see that there is a structure of application and components and data stores um, with plateaus as well and then of course you can also deploy your components and data stores onto some nodes, logical nodes, and define some requirements in production, high availability, a number of users, and so on. That can be all done. Okay, that ends the demo. Let's go back to our presentation. To visualize an enterprise, LabNav organizes architecture following generic systems semantics. And here is an overview of how this all works. Processes are performed by people, by applications and by equipment. Technology supports applications. People, equipment and applications interact. They use and produce information. Information can be physical, digital or mental in our brain. People and equipment use and produce physical material. Each step in a process uses functions, one or several functions. Functions are also used for classifying people equipment, applications, and information. So this is the real world, and it is therefore a simple and efficient way to organize our architecture. Now, if you look at common architecture standards, they use instead some awkward approach for organizing architecture, because they are unfortunately still bound to immovable habits. So instead of providing just a tool or just a process or just a language, LabNav provides a framework that is really complete. And you can easily imagine how LabNav empowers your team. We play many different roles, but we speak the same language we share the same information in the same repository. We follow the same process and we use the same tool. Therefore, we collaborate effectively. 
we are already reaching the end of our presentation and now let's see what's new in LabNav 4. You know, in architecture, we often need to exchange information with the rest of the organization, like IT Finance, for example, or with a CMDB. Now, with LabNav 4, you can address advanced synchronization scenarios. You can also automatically normalize your repository content, the structure, the location of elements in packages, and you can also generate implicit relationships. Diagrams can be automatically selected and protected against connected changes or other types of change. And all these features can be, of course, scheduled as you wish. Well, if you like to learn more about architecture innovations, go to Udemy. You will find great and useful LabNav training courses on Udemy, and there is currently a promotion. Now, the best is, of course, to try it. We cannot see you, but we thank you all for sharing your time with us this morning this afternoon or this evening, whatever your case may be. Feel free to contact us to learn more and to schedule a demo as you wish. Right now, we will be available for you via the MS Teams site. And we will try to answer your questions on this MS Teams site. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, Alain. Thank you, Ursulia, for the very detailed and informative presentation. Uh, we will wait for a couple of minutes to get, you know, if um, to get some questions from participants, if there are any. So, if there are any questions from participants, I'll get, a, I'll paste those questions to Microsoft Teams uh, for you to take a detailed discussions and have one-to-one -one conversation with the participants directly. So thank you once again, Alain and Ursulia. Thank you. Uh, thanks everyone for taking your time to participate this session. Uh, as said, uh, both the speakers will be available in uh, Microsoft Teams to have a elaborate conversation. The link to Microsoft Teams is pasted in the chat window for your quick reference. Uh, the recording of this video will be available in eaglobalsummit.com with complete Q&A and the qu questionnaires after this summit and we will be notifying you all by email once it is made available. Thank you and once again everyone and looking forward to host you all in another wonderful session at this summit shortly. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.